security. Wait, 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 no. Hey. What's the matter with you? Me. It's not me trying to access a class four restricted network. All right. I just came here to fix this thing. I hit a wrong key. Is that some kind of criminal offense? Yeah, the thing is, uh, Eddie, you'd have to hit an awful lot of wrong keys and hit them all in the right order to trigger this alarm. So you're a wirehead now, too. Well, good, because I'm out of here. I'm not paid enough to deal with this. Relax. What's got to happen now is all standard procedure. We take the network offline. Our digital forensics guys look it over. In the meantime, we ask you a few questions until your story's confirmed. Oh, good, because when it does, I'm going to have my hyena brother-in-law, who just happened to be a transport chasing lawyer, suing you for false imprisonment. There's no arrest here, Eddie. We're simply detaining you for a reasonable period, pending clarification of this matter. Weapons? No, nah, he's clean. Here's what's been established so far. All and also ransom scans should be ready soon. What pins? Guys, I came here to fix a computer. Hey, what do you think I am, some kind of wirehead commando? Maybe hey, I should put these black smudges under my eyes? It says your coordinates reporting one of their uniforms stolen. A uniform with the name Eddie J. Miller stitched above the pocket. What a coincidence. That's the name on your uniform, Eddie. What would you like me to call you something else? Now some punk breaks into my locker and steals one of my plastic weave uniforms, which Cornet makes us buy from them at a modest 500% markup. Sit down. No, I'm gonna go to Cornet. I'm gonna quit, collect my things, and go home. Then I'm gonna sit down. How old are you, sir? How old am I? I'm 20. 20? That is the number recommended in IPC sentencing guidelines for attempting to gain criminal access to a level 4 security site. Hey guys, come on. I wasn't trying to do that. Convince us. This wasn't supposed to get serious. My name is Brent Teagarden. I'm in my second year at City U. I'm a computer science major. We had a bet that I couldn't social engineer my way into CPB headquarters and get on your primary server. A bet? Well, you got in all right. That's a major achievement. But why couldn't you get out? What spoiled it? What set off the bells and whistles? You got some freaky stuff on that computer of yours. In what way? Well, once I got root access, it should have given me administrator rights, complete control. But instead, I started to see freaky stuff. The weird things would happen in response to normal inputs. At first, I thought it was supposed to be intimidating, you know, floating skulls, and fiery voices. At least an hour, I tried to cover my tracks. I tried to find a way out. But these skulls just kept following me. Your security program, if that's what it is, blocked me every time. This is the most impressive security system I've ever seen. That is a most impressive story, Eddie. However, it is inaccurate. Our computers contain no such security system. You see, I think you put the floating skull crap in the system, Eddie. And if you did, even if we get it out, you're facing a long-term and preventive detention. I didn't want to make you guys feel bad. It's not your fault that the CPB primary server has the most pathetic cheese ball security system I've ever seen on any corporate net, let alone a law enforcement one. You hungry? I'm hungry. Let's go get some to eat. Give the kid a chance to collect his thoughts for a minute. Here we go. The air conditioner has shut down. Uh, the sound of it, I would say the problem is building wide. Jeez. Mm, I don't think his chops were in the computer science field. I shut down your air conditioning system, and I'm just getting warmed up. <laughs> shut down the air conditioning for a warm-up? Yucks on you. Hey, 
Is it getting warm in here? Or am I nuts? As of now, it, it, Lieutenant, it's just the primary, what well, is it? I understand it. Computer is down. So I'm given to understand, sir. Dr. Chang's medical server and our backup communication. They're secure behind some sort of... Firewall. Right. For now, I'll leave this to you, Lieutenant. But I will be monitoring the situation closely. That's reassuring. That's what we're getting. If you were to assist us in removing any malicious programming, the judiciary would take your cooperation into account. I'm not interested in making any deals. Tell us in general terms what you've done, what systems are likely to be affected. The law requires you to mitigate any damage you may have done. If there is danger to life or property, I advise you to disclose it. Deputy Chief Atkins is temporarily acting head of our division. Oh, you gotta be kidding. Atkins is an administration. He shouldn't be placed in an operational role. He's the ranking officer. So what's going on with this kid? It appears he has set up a number of malicious programs in our computers. Who the hell is he? We don't know. He's told us multiple conflicting stories, has many demands, may not have any. He penetrates the heart of the CPB, tangles with a supposedly secure network, blows through it like smoke, all for no reason? No apparent reason. I'm not taking any chances. I'm ordering a partial evacuation of the building. You better check on our boy. Make sure no more crap is hitting the fan. I've got a date with my wife and daughter at 5 o'clock. What we have here is the brain of a young man of normal intelligence. However, it's operating at an unusually high performance level, making this reasonably intelligent young man capable of acts we associate with genius. Acts like breaking into our main server and planning programs our experts can't even find. Now, the red indicates levels of intense, sustained cerebral activity. Activity, if prolonged, causes permanent brain damage. The yellow indicates areas that have already been damaged. Brain functions have been deliberately stimulated. So what do you think? He's taking a booster drug? That would be my guess. So he may or may not be the same person next time we see him. His behavior has been erratic. Side effect number one of artificially enhanced mental performance. Until this process terminates, either naturally or otherwise, he'll grow increasingly unstable. But at some point, he's got to break down, right? There'll be a seizure or a cerebral aneurysm or a stroke. If we can convince him of the danger, there might still be time to help him. Using visual field patterns and the right sedatives, I can gradually slow your mental process down to a level that's sustainable. Your mind and your life are at stake if I don't. Do you have any idea what it's like to have reached this degree of awareness? To be able to function at this level? What I did to your computers is just a fraction of what I'm capable of. 
And I don't care what happens to me in the end. In the end, we all die. For the first time in my life, I can understand. I can see everything. Eddie. Booster drugs create a false sense of confidence. They foster an artificial sense of well-being. The drug seduction can be fatal. Drug. Every detainee is subject by law to a basic medical screening. Your neurological workup shows heightened brain function. So you ran me through some diagnostic equipment. It didn't show any drug. Then give us a blood sample and let us confirm that. If I refuse? You got a court order. But if you didn't take the drug, just prove it. This will be over before you know it. It'll all be all right. Nothing will ever be all right again. Don't feel sorry for me. I can see things beyond your imagining. I can see destiny. Our machines meant to serve mankind, threatened to supplant us, to pervert our destiny. Yeah, well, that's... Uh, that's real interesting, Eddie. Maybe you can understand how that's not quite clear to everyone. Well, then let me make it clearer than the truth. Humanity did not make the ascension from ape to man for the purpose of creating machines. I hope I'm getting your attention. Looks like we got some bad information. All right, everybody, stand down. Come on, let's go. There's nothing to see. Let's get out of here. Right crime. Wrong address. I guess that happens when your computers are down. I just got an e-com that you were in a hostage situation. I think we can safely assume, Lieutenant, that Eddie was the source of that e-com. Olan says his brain functions are heightened. He's on some kind of booster drug. She's just taking a blood sample. He denies it. What's that? Have you noticed this guy gets kind of uncomfortable when you come in the room? you uncomfortable yes yes you do well, we got that cleared up oh I gotta just ask Eddie between you and the lieutenant. Come on, I know there's something there. I guess I just have a problem with authority figures. You can do better than that. Come on, give me something. The lab's got something for you. What? I don't know. Holden said it was important. No sign of a booster drug, but I found something that might be more interesting. Ever heard of first wave? An early illegal attempt to improve the human gene code ended badly. 150 babies were born. 
150 kids whose genetic code was altered in a way experimenters thought would enhance their mental ability. It didn't. Yeah, yeah, I remember. Most of those birth defects were so severe that kids died from them, right? Mm-hmm. But a few lived, and they appeared normal, or almost so. But of those few, most became mentally unstable. Now, it's impossible to say whether that was the result of genetic manipulation or the result of being in the care of juvenile authorities. People weren't exactly lining up to adopt those kids. No. None of the few who even qualified for adoption were successfully placed with families. Do you think this guy's first wife? Mm-hmm. I've identified the marker sequence of the protein that the experimenters used to sign their work. He's used something other than drugs to enhance his mental performance. He sees things or thinks he can see things before they occur. Before they occur? Similar experiences have been documented when a person's mental energy is raised this high. Carly, what do you got? Step down, transformers overloaded. Two of them blew before you can shut them down. The whole building's on back. I'd like to tie this kid to a transformer. There may not be much point. I believe Eddie's on the verge of losing his sanity. Yeah, if you ever had any. I will get back to him now. Digital security is working to undo whatever it is the kid did. I've conditionally approved your request for a partial evacuation. Conditionally approved? It's approved, but conditionally because I don't like it. I'm the senior operational officer, and it's me who'll be held accountable for my orders. I'm just talking out loud, Aaron Paul, but I'm convinced a consultant with expertise may be of help to us now. I expect the matter will be resolved before we reach that situation, sir. The kids got the Bureau half paralyzed. Civilians are at risk. We need a resolution now. Good news, bad news. Bad news, we're on backup power. Good news is we finally got a history on this kid. Hopefully we can get him talking. Whatever it takes. William Melvin. Uh, fortunately for us, he's a personal friend of mine, my wife's brother. Excuse me, sir, who? Dr. Melmoth. He's a former professor of psychology and an expert on the criminal mind. It may be premature to bring in a man of his stature. We risk bolstering our detainee's sense of self-importance. Nonsense. After I've briefed Bill, we'll rendezvous in the squad room for a status update. In the meantime, forward transcripts of all interviews with the detainee to my office for Dr. Melmoth's analysis. Yes, sir. Now that your lab has identified me as a first wave kid, you must feel very good about yourselves. A sense of progress can be invigorating. It has been confirmed that you are not using any of the known booster drugs to enhance your mental performance. Yes. I deplore the use of mood-altering drugs, generally. I see that you've figured out who I am. Number 112. You can see why a name wouldn't mean much to a kid who's been born with his own personal number. Heartbreaking, isn't it? in various group homes until you were 12. During that time, attempts were made to place you with at least five different foster families. Well-meaning social workers, crazed with guilt, seem able almost to do the impossible. Like those vids you see of people in riots carrying large stolen appliances on their backs, like ants able to live 10 times their body weight. Social workers tried to place me in a loving home environment. No foster family would have me. I guess if I'd ever generate a return on all of that love and care that prospective parents would have to pump into a troubled child like me. You left the juvenile system just before your 12th birthday. The system failed me. I decided to pursue my destiny unaided. Of course, I meant I'd have to give up all that ice cream that I'd received compliments of the IPC every Saturday. But I'd come of age. You were just a kid. I was 12 years old. 
hanging around a North City drop port watching freight move on and off planet. It was there that I first met others like myself. Others like yourself. Drop ports are traditionally a haven for occult groups, and that's about it. Is that what you're trying to tell us, Eddie? They particularly dislike the word cult. I call them unwavering visionaries. Which group were you with? Our group is Ensign. You must have read our communiques. We're a planet-wide organization determined to protect humanity from the continuing threat of genetic degradation. And some. Is that where you learn the skills to enhance your mental performance? It's an advanced meditation technique. Part Zen Buddhism, part Christian mysticism. Part secret recipe. Do you want to know what the secret recipe part is? Okay, I'll give you a hint. Sounds only a dog would hear. The secret recipe part of your meditation technique is sound frequency. Pitch and tone control is no secret, Eddie. It's a well-known means of altering consciousness. Very good. Your status as a first wave child must have made you very popular with the Ensom people. It's a core belief of Ensom that human DNA is sacred. It's to be revered, not sliced and diced. Ensom refers to the human genome as first code. Very wise, very pious men believe that first code is the sole acceptable form of life instruction coding. Life should exist outside the code. That means all forms of machine intelligence, even plasma-based androids, are an abomination to you. To end some. Yes, it does. How does that sit with you, android? you've been through, Eddie, no one's going to make an issue out of what happened here today. So let's solve our differences. Yeah. I could spend the rest of my life in a state facility for the criminally insane. Why not? Most of the other first wave kids have not already dead or... Listen to me, Eddie. Whatever your technique is, you're severely damaging your brain. Organic damage showed up over your scans. We can help prevent permanent damage to your mind, Eddie. We can slow down your brain functions. Our lab has the machines that can ease the pain in your head. Give you time to think this thing through. Give you time, you mean? You don't have a clue what's gonna happen next. No, we don't. But we are prepared to listen. We can even arrange for you to make a statement a statement whatever you want but you gotta tell us what you want give us a chance to sort this thing out make it right this is my statement i believe that would be your backup transformers to an anti-technology cult called Ensom. Ensom believes it is his duty to recall humanity to a specifically human destiny, freed from dependence on machine intelligence. Ensom has never been more than a minor annoyance. They've always targeted companies in the computer and artificial intelligence fields. Why us? Why the CPB? Perhaps because I am an android. I believe our detainee is also aware that I am a new class of android. How would he know that? I'm not sure. He knows. Lieutenant Aaron Falls. I see the situation has deteriorated since we last spoke. We've just lost a few trains. Our communication systems are stalled. CPB transports are running into each other in the streets. Anyway, 
Let's dig in and see if we can help you. This is Dr. William Melmoth. He'll be interviewing your detainee. Chief Atkins, sir, are you sure it's wise for such a senior official as yourself to take on an operational command? After all, the situation itself might be hopeless. It might be wise. Detective, I think I know my duty. I'm taking charge. Now, first things first. Lieutenant Ernthal, do you have a briefing table? Once we've been fully briefed, I want Dr. Melmoth to have a look at our boy. Okay. Now, the hostility that you feel is the result of a natural psychological mechanism. It's called transference. Frankly, it's so elementary, I almost forgot to take it into account. Wow. You must really mean something if you're going to go around talking like that. Well, naturally, this is very difficult for you to understand. Currently, your brain is awash in serotonin. Now, serotonin is a natural occurring chemical that is found in the cerebral cortex. This kid's brain can seize up, or he could kill someone, and we're listening to this clip. David has a point. Analysis cannot treat organic brain dysfunction. Perhaps Dr. Chang could suggest to Dr. Melmoth another approach. So, for instance, levels of serotonin are elevated in delusions, hallucinations, and in some cases, even schizophrenia. Now, because of stress or duress, you can end up with an overabundance of it. See, I've actually seen many, many cases just like All right, this, this is over. Excuse me? Everybody out. This is between me and Eddie. Lieutenant Arenthal, this is highly unorthodox. I think we should do what he says. Gentlemen. Here's the most recent reading. He may look cool on the outside, but his cerebral cortex is really heating up again. Maybe somebody will explain the meaning of this. I think there's some sort of connection between Eddie and the lieutenant. Why won't you look at me? I was looking at you before. Look at me now. Does that make it better? Have you achieved your proper comfort level now? This is a dangerous game you're playing. I'm prepared to die for what I believe in. Can you say the same? You know me. We've met before, haven't we? Why should I remember when you don't? When's the last time you showed a poor first wave kid the way to the bathroom? Can you tell me where the bathroom is, Mr. Arenthal? Don't worry, I'll take him. Give you two a chance to talk. I want to go ahead with this, Martin. I really think he's the one. We have to be very sure. He's a complicated kid. He needs the kind of home we can give him. One to be our son. Your real name, they called you Teddy back then. I never had a real name. But yes, they used to call me Teddy. My wife and I almost adopted you. I know. You started a fire in your own dorm room after our last interview. I was confused. I never felt that kind of affection before. I was afraid. I couldn't risk being hurt that way. After the fire. I know. A first wave kid sanity is suspect already. The fire made the whole thing moot. But now. I want to know. Ben. These areas of the brain don't normally interact. They are now, and with an intensity I wouldn't have thought possible. I believe me, we may be about to see one of Eddie's tricks.
day you didn't tell Helen and I you were a first wife kid, your records were sealed. All we knew was that at your age, finding a family was less likely as you grew older. We knew that you were troubled. I'm still trouble. As the state euphemistically calls it. Why did you come here? And some was a pretext for me. I came here because I wanted to see you again. You and your beautiful wife. My wife. Emergency response team to level three. Emergency response team to level three. We need a fire extinguisher. Got it. You in the room, move! What's going on? Move! What's going Bring on? me my comrade now! Okay, okay, don't shoot. You move! Weapons on the floor, everyone! Drop your weapons on the floor! Do what she says. What she says. Kick them over to me. It's okay. I need to know which comrade you're talking about. Had kind of a busy day. As you can see all our computers are down. There's only one ensign. We're the reason your computers are down. Bring my comrade to me, or I will be forced to act. Well, there's no need for that, all right? You're talking about Eddie, right? He's not far. But you gotta do me a favor and not hurt these people. Then I'll bring him out. Okay? Go get him. Hurry up! Take me, then we can talk. You're wasting time. I think you need a little demonstration to show our seriousness of purpose. You, Neil, quickly. There's no need for this. We know you're serious about your beliefs. Move out of the way. Move. <laughs> Bow your head and prepare yourself as best you can. This has nothing to do with him or any of the others. It has to do with me. All right, then you'll die first. No! Hold on, Newt. They've harmed all of us. But that will be over soon. You're crossing the line, Eddie. Think about what you're doing. There's a lot of sympathy out there for a first wave kid. But that all goes away the minute you kill somebody. I'm not looking for... <laughs> <laughs> Leave him there. Back in the room. 
door. I said door. Guess we crossed that line you were talking about, huh? You haven't. You can stop this from getting worse, Eddie. You can let these people go. He's right. You've got your comrade. You don't need hostages now. You gave your word you'd free them. They mean nothing to me either way. They mean something to me. Comrade? I want them over here. By me. Now. Move it. They're innocent. Eddie, you want to make some kind of statement? You want to blame somebody for your condition? Blame me. But tell us what the hell it is you want. Do you remember how I told you? That after years of group homes, and after dozens of chances at being placed in a family. I got one last chance. Typical of the mechanized routine of the machine model state. Inhuman attempts to categorize human problems. I reached an age when adoption was no longer an option. Especially if the kid might be genetically flawed. You've told me the story before, comrade. Well, the lieutenant his wife. They were that family. The family I might have had. These people? That's not something you forget. What better representatives of a machine-minded culture? Do you believe that? Really, comrade? Rejecting a human child as inadequate? A child damaged and created by the perfectionist machine culture they've embraced? But could they have embraced me? Never. I understand now why you had to come here. You had a need to finish your business with these parents who discarded you. We never discarded him. Even after the fire. Social services withdrew you as a consideration for adoption. This is a great opportunity, comrade. And some can turn this situation into a brilliant argument by deed. Argument by deed. What does that mean in English? It means the honor of redressing the injury will be all yours, comrade. Been reading too many of your own pamphlets. Comrade, the honor is yours. I don't think Eddie was ever planning on killing anyone. I don't think he's gonna do it now. Don't be absurd. This was his plan. It was my plan. But my purpose was personal. I came here to find the truth. Answers to private questions. And some would neither have understood nor allowed such an operation. Comrade, you need to clarify your goals. I must remind you that we are here to serve not ourselves, but mankind. That is our purpose. That is Ensign. I'm human. I feel that. This family provided the only opportunity I ever had for love. These people are representatives of the machine state. If Ensom is to prosper, they must die. Drop the weapon! 
happen. Everybody okay? Yeah. Call in the med team. You heard me? Get a med team! Go! Right, let's go! On. Really? Can I touch you? Take my hand, Eddie. Why is mommy with that man? He's very sick. Your mother's trying to make him comfortable. Can I see your daughter? Martin, could you and Tara come here for a moment? I'm so sorry. I'm sorry for everything. It could have been. Goodbye, Tara. Goodbye, sir. Exists. The human genome is special and deserves to be protected. Can it be protected without declaring war on non-humans? It would be nice to think so. Yeah. 